This man drew an analogy. He said the analogy of me and you, the people, is like a man who's standing in front of a fire. Listen to this. It's like a man who's standing in front of a fire and he's trying to stop moths and insects and mosquitoes from going into the fire. This was the concern this man had for you. This was the concern Muhammad, may peace be upon him, had for you. But he wasn't only concerned about humans. He wasn't only concerned about humans. He was concerned for all other creatures. He was concerned for animals. On another occasion, one of the companions of the Prophet took small chicklets, small budgies, small chicklets from a nest of a pigeon. And when the Prophet saw this, he told the companions to go and return them to the mother because he saw the mother, the bird circulating above in distress. He told her to return the pigeons. This was a concern this man had, not only for human beings, but for animals. This man was concerned for humanity. Now you may be thinking, this was in the past. He did this for those people. What has he done for me? But if any of you here use iPhones, who uses iPhones? Who has an iPhone? Who has an iPhone? Good. Who has any other mobile devices? A lady there has an Apple iPad. Who has a computer at home? Who has a computer at home? You have a computer. Who has a TV? Who has a t everyone has a TV? Who has a fridge at home? Who has a toaster at home? Who has a washing machine at home? Exactly, we all have these immunities today. We live in a world which where science has progressed. We live in a world which provides us with all of these luxuries. But we have all of these things because of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now you may be thinking I'm crazy. How does Muhammad relate to a washing machine? How do we have a washing machine, a computer, a phone because of Prophet Muhammad? They're all Western inventions. They're Western inventions, yes. But the West went into its renaissance. The West had its scientific revolution. Why? Because the Islamic world, what happened in Islamic Spain for 800 years, the Muslims allowed for a society of convivencia, allowed for people from different races, Jews, Christians, Muslims, to come together and to discover and to preserve the works of the Greeks and to learn together. And that was what led to the scientific revolution in the West. It was what happened in Islamic Spain for 800 years, which led to the Renaissance. This is history we're not told about. And why was this implemented in Islamic Spain? Why did this community arise? Because of Muhammad Adam Smith. If you have a 20 pound note on you right now, if you guys have a 20 pound note, look in the back of that note. You'll see an image of a man. His name is Adam Smith. He wrote in 1869 and he said something profound. He said the Renaissance was the result of what the Islamic world gave, was the result of Islamic Spain, was the result of the teachings of Islam, which allowed for a community, which allowed for a society to emerge, which allowed for the sciences to develop, to be preserved and to move on. This is what resulted in what we have today. So we had the Renaissance because of the Islamic world, what happened in Spain. And we had what happened in Spain because what the Prophet Muhammad was given. We had all of that. And if this doesn't make you love this man, if this doesn't make you love this man, let me finally draw your attention to the people you love. Think about the people you love. Everyone here loves someone. All of you love someone. So let me ask you a question. Who do you love as we have, as we have stated here? Who do you love? Think about the people you love. And if you love those people, then you need to love the one who gave you love. You need to love the one who gave you these people that you love. That's Jesus you, Christ. You need to love Jesus the one. created everyone. That's God, the one who created Jesus. No, you Jesus need to love the, the one who creator. created everything. Jesus who created your families, who created your wives, who created your children. He gave you these people and he gave you love in your hearts for these people. And he gave you the ability to love. So if you love your families, love God. And if you love God, love the one he loved. And who did he love? The most beloved to him was Prophet Muhammad, the final messenger to walk the face of this earth. Love that man because he gave us so much, directly and indirectly. And it's, it's the sad reality is we live in a world where the media is distorted.
distorting everything. Where the media is painting Muhammad may peace be upon him in such a distorted light. If you study this man, you look at this man's life, you look at what he gave this world, and you look at what we have because of him, you'll love this man. There are a million and one. There are a million and one reasons to love this man. All we need to do is turn back and study. Look at the Islamic tradition. Look at the life of the Prophet. He's one of the world's most well documented men in history. Study his life and as rational people disorder you.